So this lesson is sponsored by me. I have a funk bass book and a funk bass course. The book has 100 grooves very much like this, many of them with backing tracks and all of them with drum loops that you can use to practice and to get bang in time. The course takes 40 lines from the book and I teach them exactly in this way. You're learning um, in, in the style of great players, their techniques, all the different scales and modes you can play over it. So if you're interested in that, I'll put links below. In this lesson, I've got three 16th note funk bass lines for you. And as I go on, I'm going to teach you the techniques, the way to count it, in particular the 16th note rhythms, and also what key we're in, what chords we've got, and what notes you can use to maybe expand it a little bit. So let's look at the first one, and I'll take it almost beat by beat, really. So this is the first one. We've got a low G and a high G, fret three of the E string going to fret five of the D string, both Gs. Now I'm tapping my foot. It's duh, duh. That's that rhythm there. You've got a dotted eighth followed by a sixteenth. And when it comes to sixteenth notes, the key is subdividing the beats and counting. So you have sixteen sixteenth notes in a bar or a measure, and therefore four in every single beat. And you can't really do this without being aware of that, being aware of the subdivision of the beats. So you're counting like this. You're going one, two, you know, tapping your foot. So you go one, two, three, four. And whether you're going like, in my head, it's going like, or like, digga, 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 digga. Some people count one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. I think a lot of music schools teach that way. But I just have, you know, just four going on in my head. And if you're aware of that, you're then able to approach this, approach reading the rhythms, but also feeling the rhythms. So if you think about it, the dotted eighth is worth three sixteenths and then the last sixteenth is the fourth one so it's like chick chick da ga da ga or one e and a uh. whichever method you have you then have a a good sort of way of working out where the notes are and then we've got after two plucks two sixteenth notes we've got a little hammer on onto the g on the fifth fret of the d string now again you can do that third finger or little finger, sort of up to you. I'm doing little. You don't need to hammer on from a great height, but you do need the hammered on note to be as loud as the plucked. So just isolate that and practice it. Then we return back to the F, so slowly. So those are four sixteenths, da, da, da. and then the last sixteenth is a ghost note. I'll play it nice and slow. We've got G, F, D. And that will take a bit of time to get used to the timing of that ghost note. And what I'm doing here, my fingers just, just lie across all the strings really, just to make it completely dead. No accidental harmonics going on there. Okay. Second bar, we've got exactly the same rhythm as the first beat, first bar. This time we're on C's. I'm resting my thumb on the E string, and I've got my fingers again in this one to four sort of shape in order to, to facilitate that pattern a little bit easier, but also to mute. That's really important. I've got my first finger up against the underside of the E. There are no extraneous noises. That's the next bit. So we've got C's to D's with a little ghost note. So if you're counting, which you should always be doing, the second beat is two, da, da, da. So it's like your foot is always tapping. And that where that rest is, that's where your foot's tapping, okay? Ba, 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 okay? Or if you're going chick, 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 chick. It's a bit weird to sort of explain it, but when you get used to this, you're just counting every single beat and every single time a beat goes by, you've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, whatever counting method you're doing. So I'm just adding that little tap in to show you where that beat is. Let's remove it now. Okay, let's do the whole line. The 
let's move on to the second line. And let's start talking about chords here. So the first one, first line, which all they all fit together, by the way, we've got a G minor, C minor, D minor. These are all chords that belong to one key, the key of G natural minor. The one chord, as we call it, is a G minor. The four chord, which is just literally the chord built from the fourth note, one, two, three, four, which is C, this is C minor. And the five chord is the next note in the sequence, the D. Okay, so if you want to add some fills in, I'll go into this a little bit later in, this, in the lesson, you can use those notes. Bit of minor pentatonic, bit of G natural minor. I'm jumping the gun a bit, forget about that for now. I'm moving on to bass line number two. Okay, so let me slow that down. So we've got two eighth notes. Again, counting like this, it's one and. So it's duh, duh. Keeping the notes fairly short again because I feel that it fits in this style of funk music, but you can you can alter the, the length, you know. Keeping them about that. Now I don't really know how to notate this next bit. I've got an S which is slap. That's where you get your thumb and make that slapping noise. But I'm not doing it like that. I'm just doing it, getting sort of fingers, the index and middle, and just slapping it somewhere. It doesn't really matter. And following that, a ghost note. I'm actually using my index and then following through to pluck. And that's all the time there. Got the hand just laying across the strings to get that ghost note. You might cycle just the first and second beats. Now, if you're looking at these 16th notes and they look hard and they sound hard to play, number one, you always need a challenge in life. So if this is a challenge for you, then that's great. The number one tip I have is to do what I'm doing, which is to take it really slowly, number one, and split it up into a beat or maybe two beats. There's no shame in doing that. I know we all want to play fast and we always we want to play fast now. But the key to being able to play this stuff is, is patience. Um, and just, yeah, splitting it up. So I might do something like that. And what is happening over time, and we're talking, you know, 10, 20 minutes of this every day for how long, however long it takes you, you know, have that real fighter's attitude to just go through your practice routine until you get good at this, because it will feel difficult and unfamiliar. And then at some point it will feel easier and familiar. That's the only way I can explain it. So. So that might feel awkward, especially that. Okay, then we go to D. We've got exactly the same rhythms here. This time we're on D. Notice I'm playing all of these notes that can be played open string. I'm playing them on the fifth fret. Feel free to play them open, but I just feel there's more control in terms of note length if you play them fretted. So I could do the same move now, but making sure to move to the D string. So we've got that slap thing again. Now everything so far is roughly hand staying in this position, but at the end here, now the little slap thing and the little ghost note gives you time to move your, your hand, because it doesn't really matter where you do that. And I'm playing that B flat first fret. You could equally just play it with your little finger on the sixth fret of the E string. There are always multiple ways of playing the same thing on a bass. And if you ever find a way that you like, go for it. Next line. All the way there is the same. We've got a little rest here and then. So a hammer on. This is from fret five to six and I'm playing it using the third to the fourth finger. Probably the bass player's worst thing to do this is to use these two fingers great way to practice. So I've got the fingers kind of nice and curled, you know, not quite rigid so that the fingers aren't collapsing. And that probably, yeah, that little joint there is, is probably the weakest for many people. And hammering on with a little finger is a challenge. So again, practice that. And then we're plucking all the rest. So you've got C to D flat, and then C 
B flat, C, B flat, G. That very much outlines the blues scale. G minor pentatonic here. Which are the notes G, B flat, C, D, F. And that D flat is a flat five, classic blues sound. If we go to the beginning of the line and just think rhythms here, you've got two eighth notes followed by four sixteenths. So it's da 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 da. So reading it, whenever you see eighth notes and you're counting like this, one and da da, there are two in every beat. Da da da, and just double that speed to get your sixteenths. Da 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 da, and it's just that rhythm a lot. And when it comes to 16th notes, the same rhythms crop up all the time. There are only really a handful. So if you look at the end of the line, you've got two 16ths attached to an eighth. So that's da da da. And you learn to internalize the rhythm, both when you see it and when you hear it. I recommend learning to read rhythms, actually. It's a very good way of studying them. Let's move on to number three. We've got a 16th note, then an eighth note rest, then a 16th note. So it's, it's an interesting rhythm, this. So one, two, three, four, very short. So it's like one, E and uh, the E and the and are rest. So you don't play it. So it's one, E and uh, or dig, dig, uh. And especially that fourth 16th note in every single beat, that can be quite hard to feel and play. At least it is for me. That's where I have to kind of focus and meditate on it a little bit, but just practice it enough that I work on it so that it isn't difficult. I'm telling you that for me, year, for years, I was just a bit late or a bit early with that fourth 16th note. So now when I count, it's less of a problem. So tick, tick, bah. Also, da, da, it falls just before your foot taps the next beat. Da, da. And there comes a time where you just click with that. You've got a real connection between your foot being this metronome and, and where the rhythms are. So then we've got to rest after that. And this is almost the same rhythm on the F here, except we've got the first F is played for the duration of three sixteenth note, sixteenth notes. So it's a little bit longer. So instead of it's so instead of short, it's a little longer. Carry on. Same rhythm on C, short, and then. And there's no getting around the fact that when you play sixteenth notes, you're asked to pluck a little bit faster and you're doing your index middle alternate plucking and there's very much a timing thing that has to occur between your plucking hand and your fretting hand again slow it down i'm going to put a link below where you can get a pdf of all three of those lines for free i'm also going to put that drum beat that i was playing along to so you can use that but remember first without a drum beat just dissect the bars, you know, just do one beat, two beat, piece these together, especially if you're a beginner or coming back to bass after a long way away from it. These are hard. 16th note funk bass lines are difficult. It's why they're really great for you to practice and to, to aim to get towards that level. Don't forget about my funk bass book and my funk bass course if you want to go much, much deeper into this. In fact, here's a video that is one of my funk bass course lines that you can check out. But thanks very much for watching. If you do have any questions, let me know. I'll see you on the next video.